It is Friday, June 30th today. We're back in London. We are at our house here in Wimbledon Village, getting ready for Wimbledon this next week. We went to Eastbourne for a few days. Eastbourne is a really cute little town on the coast of England. Taylor had won that tournament twice, so we absolutely love it there. It's super cute. He promptly exited this year, which of course he was bummed about, but like 90% of players are here in Wimbledon training already, so I think in the long term, it's probably good that he is having a few extra days to prep and plan for Wimbledon, which is the real important tournament this season. The house that we're staying in is so cute. It's so charming. It's like fulfilling up my cottage core dream. So I will give you guys a little house tour right after this. And the garden is so cute and it's so nice to have a kitchen. I really love it. I'm so excited for the next two weeks, but I thought for this vlog, I would just do a kind of weekend in my life and getting ready for the week ahead. Firstly, just some life updates, announcements. If you guys saw my vlog last week, you might have noticed this little tennis racket necklace and this little tennis racket bracelet that I've been wearing. And if you follow me on Instagram, you probably already saw this, but these are actually a collection that I created with Lottie NYC, which is an absolutely adorable, small, slow fashion, female owned, jewelry brand that I have been obsessed with for years. So how this collection came about is in June of 2021, so like two years ago, I saw her first edition of this little tennis racket bracelet on Instagram. And at the time I was still working in corporate, so like, I don't know why I did this, but I messaged the brand and asked if she would be able to send me one of these for me to wear at Wimbledon. But in hindsight, the audacity of me to ask that, given the fact that I did not have a following and I was not an influencer is kind of hilarious. So of course she said no, fair, I bought it. And I wore it at Wimbledon that year. I wore it at Australian Open and then US Open. I wore this bracelet all the time. I loved it. I organically shared it for about two years. And then about six months ago, she reached out to me with the idea to do this co-branded piece. Now, this is something that is pretty common for influencers to do. It's not something that I'd ever really thought about doing or wanting to do because I didn't really want to do a collection with a fast fashion brand that didn't quite fit my brand. And there's only a few select companies that I'm really like, a ride or die fan of, which you guys probably know what those are. But when she brought the idea to me, it just felt so right to do. It's high quality. It's a small, slow fashion brand. I obviously love gold jewelry. I love the ideas that she had for it. So the last six months we have been working on this and I finally was able to release it yesterday and the feedback on it and the success that we've already had for it has just absolutely blown my mind. I'm so proud of this and these pieces they're so beautiful i'm really excited to start seeing them on everybody but of course it's always nerve-wracking to do something new because you are opening the doors for a whole new type of criticism which of course i was prepared for i got a ton of really positive feedback i did get a comment from a girl that was something along the lines of don't you think you shouldn't have done this and let someone who actually plays tennis or who has had tennis a part of their life for forever do it. So I think what she was trying to say is that I should have not pursued this idea of making tennis racket jewelry and let a female tennis player make it instead. And of course you guys know I do not respond to hate. I don't respond to hate comments unless it's actual constructive criticism, which I would say 98% of the time it's not. But I did respond to her and said not pursuing things in order to give other people the chance to do them would be kind of a difficult way to go about life. And I was thinking about like, imagine if when Mark Zuckerberg had the idea for Facebook and he was like, you know what? No, I'm going to let someone else take this idea and go make billions off of it. That's not the way that the world works. And the reason that I even bring this up is because it's something that I've talked about before and I want to reiterate is you have to pursue your ideas or somebody else will. And the book that I always think about when I think about this concept is Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert, which I was reading during Indian Wells that I think I forgot to include in that video. I read the book two times. It's fascinating. And the comment didn't bother or upset me at all. I don't think she was being mean and people are allowed to have their opinions, but it did make me think about that book. And since I'm kind of on this 
theme of you know creativity and pursuing creativity and trying to find your creativity if you have lost it i think that one and then of course the artist way which i'm still reading right now are great and also even if you do pursue something someone else will probably see what you're doing and go replicate it anyways you might as well do it first which brings me to my next point which is move in silence i did not tell anybody about this project i literally told no one because you don't know that something is going to happen until it happens and I fully believe in the evil eye, especially if you're in the public eye, that some people don't want you to do well and don't want you to be successful. And it's better for people to assume that you're doing absolutely nothing than be constantly trying to prove yourself. Just zip it, zip it until it's done, until you've done it. Because people will always be lurking and they'll always be doubting, but let them you already did it. If I would have posted three months ago that I'm making tennis jewelry and I would have gotten all of the feedback and criticism about how I'm not even a tennis player and I'm not even directly involved in tennis and how dare I make tennis jewelry, that would have put a lot of doubt into my mind and maybe I wouldn't have done it and not had all of the amazing feedback and support that I've gotten the last day from it. I also saw a TikTok this week from the founder of Spanx who said the exact same thing that when she was founding Spanx, when she came up with the idea of it, she did not tell a soul about it for a year until she was too far along in the project to quit or listen to any criticism of anyone. Which brings me to my next exciting update, which I also have basically not told a soul about, and that is what I'm doing at Wimbledon next week. A few months ago, I was contacted by Wimbledon and their production company, and was offered the opportunity to host my own show at Wimbledon this year. It's going to be called Wimbledon Threads. It's the first official Wimbledon lifestyle fashion series that they've done i think since the 90s so i will be covering fan fashion celebrity fashion the royals and basically everything fashion wimbledon that's why i had to get the work visa for the uk this year and it's been quite the process finally here and it's happening and the reason that i want to talk about it is because we are starting filming today it's a really big opportunity for me i'm so excited if you guys don't know much about different tennis tournaments. Wimbledon is the most famous, the oldest, and the most prestigious tennis tournament in the world. So to be able to work with them and be recognized by them is just awesome. And I'm so grateful for it. And I did not tell anybody about this. I didn't even tell Taylor's team who I travel with like basically 24 seven until like a week ago. By the time this video goes up, I'll have already shared it on my Instagram and we'll be filming on the ground starting on Monday. That's another reason why we wanted to stay in Wimbledon Village is because I will have to be on the grounds basically every single day. Um, regardless how Taylor does in the tournament, I will be staying in London, I think at least halfway through the second week of Wimbledon to film the series. So just crazy how much can change from like one video. And I hope if anyone is watching this and has considered pursuing any sort of content creation or any type of creative endeavor that you never know what could come from one little video and when they reached out to me initially they actually said that last year i had made this tiktok of fan fashion at wimbledon and that's what had caught their eye for me for this job i also do want to say because i feel like most people watching this probably don't know this i feel like i've lived 10 lives which you guys probably will learn over time but one of those happened to be i used to be a lifestyle contributor so i would go on nbc chicago nbc boston i travel all around the country so basically i would do gift guide roundups for morning shows and talk shows and at different news stations and all of my gift guide roundups were specifically for companies that gave back or had some sort of nonprofit aspect to them because i was kind of like a, a philanthropy expert and advocate. So I do have that on-camera experience. Obviously I've gotten even more on-camera experience doing YouTube and it's really cool to, you know, be doing that at a little bit higher of a level. But yeah, thank you guys for all of your support. I'm excited to kind of show the the behind the scenes of what that's like and the broadcast side of Wimbledon because it's it's really cool. Anyways, sorry this is starting out as a very chatty vlog, but I just thought those were some 
important updates to give. Um, today, I am going to the grounds for a meeting with my production team for the show. So we're doing that. I'm getting a tour of the broadcast center. I'm gonna stop by Taylor's practice and I have to go to Ralph Lauren in Mayfair to get fitted for an outfit. So basically they will dress me, they'll tailor all of the clothes to fit me. Um, and then I'll get that delivered later this week. Then we are going to the Nike house here in Wimbledon. So for every Grand Slam, Nike will set up like a studio or a house or some sort of space where they a lot of times have like a coffee bar and food and Taylor will sit down and talk with his Nike rep and then he'll get his match outfits for the week. So we're gonna do that today and then I have dinner with my friend Olivia tonight. Before I leave, I'm gonna give you guys a house tour. So this year we're staying in a house in Wimbledon Village, which is what I would say majority of players do. In past years, we've actually stayed at a hotel near the London Eye, which in hindsight, I think was a mistake because the traffic to and from Wimbledon was just a nightmare and very time consuming. So a lot of residents in the town of Wimbledon will rent out their houses for this like month or two weeks to players to come and stay in. It's just easier for players because it's so accessible to the site and they can stay with their whole team and you can make meals. And a lot of the houses here are so, so beautiful. So I'll give you guys a little house tour. I'm just gonna show kind of the common areas because this is someone's like personal house but it's so beautiful so i have to show you guys some of it it reminds me so much of my grandparents house in lanesboro minnesota i think because my grandma has art from this artist so right when i walked in it just reminded me of it it's these guys with these little silly faces i don't know why i just remember that from my childhood i'm gonna text her and ask and there's lots of mirrors in this house which we love this is my favorite part of the whole place gorgeous kitchen which i will be cooking in this week because i'm so sick of ordering food and then this beautiful sunny green living room this beautiful fireplace and my favorite part which is the ceiling like look at the molding on the ceiling it's so gorgeous this is like my dream house, honestly. Okay, we've got another full-length mirror here for fit pics <laughs> later this week. That's a very important aspect. And the best part is this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous garden. All these little bees and butterflies. Little bee and little butterfly. Aww. Like I'm gonna take photos here later this week because that's super pretty and then they have this little walkway with roses along it whoever takes care of this garden is a wonderful human being because it's so well cared for okay then here is the bedroom that we're staying in so I've got all my stuff unpacked already eh, kind of unpacked for the most part and i don't know if i've mentioned this before but i always travel with candles in my suitcase and i light them wherever we are because if i light something that smells like home it just makes me feel a little bit more homey these are my strawberry nails that i have to put on probably tomorrow maybe i'll include that in the vlog because some people are asking me how i put them on and how i take off the ones that i have on right now because i've had these on for two weeks already which is crazy i've got all my bags for the week this is my green prada that i just got which i'm so excited to wear i feel like it's very wimbledon and i've wanted a green bag for forever so i'm really excited to wear that and then i have my little strawberry bag that larude sent me so got a good selection there for the week here's a little view out into the garden and then i unpacked all my clothes and outfits for the week so because i'm filming the show i had to bring more outfits like not just for matches because i'll be on the grounds pretty much every day instead of only for the matches i've got lots of whites and floral dresses which you guys will be seeing soon I put all my pants and my shoes down here i'm also super excited about my shoe collection for the week so these are love track fancy the rude club and they're gorgeous and then i've got some more sam edelman heels so these are my favorite heels from sam edelman which i talk about all the time i got them in this denim which i feel like will be really cute with white and then i also got them in this black these are the strawberry heels that i got um and then these are dolce vita for love and lemons anyways you guys will be seeing lots of outfit content 
next week but i thought i'd give you a little overview and then really quick with the bed because i also don't think that i've talked about this before so i always sleep with a sleep mask i can't sleep without them now this one's like a thick boy from kitsch i think i look like an alien when i wear this to sleep but I just sleep better. And then I've been reading a book on my Kindle. I'm actually reading Andre Agassi's memoir right now. I'm about halfway through that. So I've been reading that before bed. And then I always travel with a silk pillowcase. So this is a silk pillowcase from Blissey. It's just better for your skin and your hair. And it's very soft and feels a little bit homey. Okay, I'm going to get changed now. It's a little chilly out today. So I think I'm gonna do this blazer. And then I'm just going to Uber to site first. Wimbledon strawberries of the year. I was getting one. <laughs> yep. Woo. First of many, many strawberries this week. Olivia and I are in the player dining area. It's really quiet right now because the tournament hasn't started. And there's some practices happening down on the match boards. At the beginning of the week, the grass is like perfect and pristine, but by the end of the two weeks, it's brown and trodden down so they don't want people practicing on them as much and. at the beginning of the week. Okay, since I'm working on the broadcast side of Wimbledon this year, my credential has access to the media center, which I've actually never been to before, but it's really cool. So they have this roof that all the media can go to and each one of these little boxes here is where the different media hosts their broadcast programs that overlooks the whole tournament and there's taylor practicing down there Penman hill with no one on it yeah there's that's the hill that everyone does picnics on this will be packed this will be a sea of people in two days so this is the court that the longest tennis match ever was played on super famous that's Hunman hill this is court one i think and then that is center court And then these are all match courts as well. And the practice courts are back behind this hill. Pim's on the hill. Pim's on the hill. Need that. That's where lots of bottles of wine will be consumed <laughs> next week. We are taking a car from the Wimbledon courts to Ralph Lauren's store in Mayfair to get a fitting because they are dressing me for a couple days. I'm with Grace. This is Grace <laughs> from Whisper. She is my producer for the week for the show. Okay, we're doing the fitting now. So I'm gonna try these cream pants and then we're gonna do the very classic Ralph look with the button up. I think these shorts and then probably a sweater draped over the shoulders. But I never learned your name. Then it wasn't long I fell in love. We are at the Nike Wimbledon house. So here they have all of the kits for men and women and they have some fun pop-up stuff. They have mini golf in the backyard, but basically all the players that are signed with Nike come here and pick out their shoes, pick out their outfits for the week. Obviously it's all white outfits. This one, the, the sizing, the sizing on this one fits me like really good on this. This one? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'll see the The sizing's off on that one? This one, I feel like it fits me a little bit better. Because like, like, I'm always between like the largest two from life, so I'm still As long as I make sure not to like throw that up in that <laughs> I mean, okay, I'll, I'll, give, that you, I'll give you some extra. <laughs> this is Glade Marie. She's going to be mixing two songs of Taylor's artist choices. I know, when I'm training, I listen to like only like rap and hip hop. Music. That's what I like to like, train too. So yeah, yeah. I know that. Have you met Lil Uzi? Eyes up in that direction. Oh, nice. A little bit brighter. Morgan, if you look over there on the computer, it's fire. There you go. That's it. Hold that. Yeah, I love that. Brilliant. And then bring hand down once again. Can you pull that ecstasy? 
Okay, Olivia and I are going to dinner tonight at the River Cafe, which is a very popular Italian restaurant here in London. I don't think I talked about my outfit yet today. So this blazer is from Club London. This is the tube top from Maurizia that I love. And then my usual kukai Australia pants. I swear I wear these pants so much, but they're so comfy and so flattering. And like, if I have a piece that I'm obsessed with, I will just wear it again and again and again so that's one of those and then i have my little red chanel and i always will do right by you i'm just kind of laying low for the next two days because i feel like next week is gonna be non-stop so i kind of want to just give myself a little break so this is a much more chill chit chatty vlog but for breakfast this morning i'm going to have this keto granola that i got from whole foods and greek yogurt i don't know how some people skip breakfast because when i wake up in the morning i am ravenous the second i open my eyes all i can think about is what my breakfast is going to be i can't even describe how absolutely ecstatic i was to order groceries because i have not had a home-cooked meal in so long i think i cooked like one day when i was in la but i was also recovering from my wisdom tooth surgery so i could only have like mushy foods the whole time that i was home which sucked and also when i first wake up i almost always have a juice shot i usually do ginger this is supposed to help your immunity who knows if that's true but again it makes me feel better about myself when i do it so <laughs> here we go Oh my god, I think this is the same one Ivana and I did at Kale's last week. It, it's so painful. Hi, I'm Pepper. Oh my god, that reminds me of my favorite TikTok ever. Every time you get in your car, keep it cool. Cayenne pepper. You can buy big bulk packs of it on Amazon. Okay, there's my little... Oh. This morning, I'm taking a few hours to just sit and go through all of the running orders for the episodes for this next week running orders are not quite scripts but they're like outlines of the episodes and everything that we're gonna cover then i'm going to walk and go meet taylor at the img house so img reps a number of tennis players and every year at wimbledon they have this beautiful house that's kind of like a gifting suite so a bunch of brands will send their products for the players and their teams um and it's really cool and they always have the best brands and stuff so i'm gonna go there with taylor pick up some stuff and i'll probably do a little haul for you guys afterwards they also usually have nobu catered there in a bar and stuff so it's kind of a fun little like hangout spot for the week for the tournament they have a bunch of cool guests that come by okay i'm going to walk to the img house this is the strawberry sweater that I got on Portobello Road last week and I'm obsessed. I've honestly been living in it. I also didn't pack very many clothes for overcast chilly weather because I really thought it was gonna be hot during Wimbledon. See how the next week is. I might have to wear this sweater every day, which I'm fine with because it's so cute. <laughs> No. Oh, I thought you would. <laughs> we got the actual version. The sleep companion. Not sure it <laughs> it's called a hatch. It's it's like an alarm clock, but I think it gets lighter throughout the day or throughout the morning. So if you have like blackout curtains or something, then you can set that to get light at a certain time and it like naturally wakes you it up. It says it also does sounds. And then I also got the Hatch Resco. So it's a mini version of that. It's technically sleep sounds for babies. For babies, because Morgan's pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. Um, it makes little sleep sounds for babies, so. And I like using sleep sounds, but I usually use the Calm app on my phone, but I feel like this might be better. Um, yeah, it's a tripod that like tracks you. Yeah, but this isn't the tripod, it's just the, this, it's just this bit. These are the smart goggles from Therabody, so it's like a sleep eye mask, but fancy one. This is from Jellycat, like a tennis ball. 
<laughs> that was small, actually. Isn't that cute? Yeah, that's pretty cool. You know the pink bunny that I have yes. in our apartment in LA? I've had that for forever, so now I have a white one to match it. And then Charlotte Tilbury had gifting. And then these are new strips, which is like a type of supplement. I thought the branding on this was really cute. New strips, I guess Wimbledon. Oh, sorry, give me a caffeine one. That little, that little game. It's better than a monster. This is a makeup travel case, but when you open it, it has one of those LED mirrors. So you can adjust like the brightness on it. This will be nice because I stay in so many hotels that have really awful lighting in the bathroom, like a full, a full makeup case. So I like the one I have from Amazon a lot. Everything's yeah, so I, know. <laughs> I don't know why I just said that. Um, I like the one I have from Amazon right now, but. Okay, well I'm going through the IMG stuff. Um, Nike also gave me their kits for Wimbledon this year. So they have a dress, that's the dress, that's the shirt. And then they gave me this little strawberry t-shirt and a little tennis skirt as well. I promise guys, I'm still trying to learn and get better at tennis. It's just impossible when we're on tour because it's not like I can go practice on the match courts at tournaments and stuff. But when I'm in LA, I'm doing lessons again. Yesterday when I went to my Ralph Lauren fitting, they gave me this jacket. Here, I'll lay it out and show you guys. So it's this kind of vintage style jacket. I promise it's really, really cute on. And then it says Wimbledon on the back, so I feel like this with like an all white outfit would be super cute. Should I change my career? Oh, that looks good. Did Nike give you that? Yeah. Is that like the Wimbledon outfit? Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> That's good well, Wolf will hype me up even if Taylor won't. I think a player. Huh? Yeah, total. Do total. I? Do I? Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Do you want to build in spandeezies or those are your... <laughs> spandeezies. <laughs> Um, but they're not built in, they're separate, but they're allowing these this year for girls. That's cool, that's yeah. Cool. So as long as the shorts are shorter than the dress, then, then the WTA players are allowed to wear and it has to be this specific shade of green. Yeah. There's like a Pantone like hex code. It has to be this like dark green and this is the same green that's on. And not purple, because that's what we're gonna call it. It's just because it's green. They gave them the option between green and purple and Wimbledon chose said green only Got and it's it. the same green that's on the check mark of all the men's clothing and the check mark on all the women's clothing so this isn't black this is like a super dark green this so year so if you're asics they have to follow the same rules the I, same green probably i think all the clothing companies yeah i haven't seen the kits from the other oh, sponsors it like but it looks black for me it does. It's a very, very dark green color, but... That's a cool looking dress. Yeah, I like it. Like, that's a good one for where it's really hot and humid. No. We're gonna make dinner. I think I'm just gonna make a pasta and probably a little side salad. I feel like because I eat out so much, sometimes I just crave like the most simple, simple home-cooked meals. Taylor went to dinner in the Wimbledon Village with some other players for... Davis Cup, I think. It was like a team dinner for Davis Cup, so all the American guys are having dinner together. Also, if you're watching this vlog and you are not interested in tennis at all, I'm sorry. I'm basically not doing anything besides tournament stuff and the broadcast job that I'm doing. So obviously it's gonna be lots of fun makeup, fashion, fun dinners, events around the tournament and stuff, but um, yeah, lots, lots of tennis. I'm like 95% sure that I have carpal tunnel because I can never open jars. Ah, and it hurts so bad. But this is the trick. If you can open a jar, take the not sharp end of a knife, a butter knife, and just bang on the edge of it and it'll boom, pop right open. I'm going to go eat dinner in the garden and then I'm going to edit my vlog tonight, this vlog, start editing it. And then I'm gonna start Severance on Apple TV. You guys know how I always talk about with content and doing things in public, you have to just not give a fuck. I'm really trying to embody that right now because I'm on site and we're filming the opening title for the show, but it's only players and like team members on site right now. And I keep having to like go into the bathroom, change outfits, go out, and this crew is just following me around, like basically twirling in my outfit. 
and nobody knows that I'm doing this yet. So I keep getting the weirdest looks from other players. You gotta just do it. You gotta just do it. So on the grounds of Wimbledon, they have a museum, which this is my third time here and I've just found out about and it's so cool. So anyone who's coming here, you need to come check it out. They have old outfits from previous years. They have a bunch of stuff about the history of Wimbledon. They have a Andy Murray Where's Waldo game that's hilarious. Here's a hypothetical day at the championships. So 4 a.m. they start strawberry picking in Kent. All the strawberries are fresh. Down. is a little fashion museum of all the kits. We're gonna film in here. I'm back at home and I've had the worst headache all day. I don't know what's going on, but tomorrow is Monday, so Taylor plays tomorrow. So I'm gonna walk you guys through my like night skincare and self tan routine because this is a very, very important way to start my week. And I always do this. Oh. You got it from your book? Can you grab it? What? Oh my god, this man's gonna give me an aneurysm, I swear to god. Anyways, first things first, I want to go over really quick the skincare that I'm using right now because I genuinely don't think I've had a breakout in months, which is crazy for me. I'm so acne prone, but I remove my makeup with micellar water and then I cleanse with panoxyl. This stuff I don't know if I'll ever actually use another face wash. It's like $8 at Target and it's absolutely amazing. At night, after I cleanse, I use the Summer Fridays Midnight Ritual Retinol Renewal Serum. And then right now I'm using the Naturium Multi Peptide Moisturizer. My skincare routine changes a lot, but I feel like something that I've learned is that it does not have to be expensive. It does not have to be fancy. It does not have to smell good for it to work. This is the best that my skin has been in years and all of my products are extremely basic and affordable like drugstore. You guys know I'm the queen of self tanning. I always get asked about my self tan routine. So I use the Coco and Eve Ultra Dark. If I wanna be super dark, I'll do two layers of this. I've tried every self tan under the sun. Think of any self tan brand you can think of. I promise you I've tried it. This one is my favorite and I feel like it lasts the longest. Also a very important part of this is the mitt. So if you self tan, you know those like crappy little mitts that are super flimsy. This one is like a Pillsbury Doughboy oven mitt. Highly recommend, even if you don't use the self tan, you should get this mitt. And after the initial day of self tanning, I'll use the Tan Lux, the gradual lotion to just kind of upkeep it throughout the week. And then on my face, every single night, I mix the Isle of Paradise dark self tanning drops with my moisturizer. So I will do all of that before bed to make sure we are slaying this week. Here is the pre-match meals of the week. Courtesy of Taylor. Where's your shirt? Okay, here's my dinner. I've got broccoli, miso cod. <laughs> this is spicy tuna roll and these like chicken meatball things that are really good. Even though I'm not supposed to be eating chicken. Why are you filming yourself right now? What? Because I'm ending it and then you interrupted me. You're ending it. Just no, I'm ending it. Anyways, Taylor's giving me attitude right now, but I feel like this vlog is gonna be very long, so I'm gonna end it. And I will see you guys next week.